I built a fully featured top-down shooter using nothing but natural language and AI, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. So it all starts by using the right tool, and in this case, I'm using WebGPT. It's a custom GPT for ChatGPT Plus that allows you to use no-code natural language playgrounds to build just about anything. Now you can pause the video here if you wanna see what my initial prompt was, but the gist of it is you, you don't wanna overwhelm the LLM with too much too quickly. So the important thing here was to outline that this is gonna be an iterative design process and build process, and to start off with a solid foundation of core movement and basic uh, player and enemy control mechanics. So you'll see the LLM talk to an external service three times to do this build process. That's connecting it to backend AI agents that really helps to keep the guardrails on and guide the project to a singular cohesive target. So I ask the LLM to proceed with its next steps and to provide me a playtest link. And we're gonna fast forward for brevity through these three steps from this point forward through the video, but now it gives me a link to playtest my game. This is a great first start. Now, what I can tell you right off the bat is the players are, the enemies are tracking toward the player. See, if I hold still, then you're gonna notice that they all track directly toward me. So their tracking is working on initial spawn, but they aren't able to update their trajectory to track with the player as the player moves around the environment. So I simply provide that feedback to the LLM and it gives me an updated build to play test these new changes. Now for a survival top-down shooter, this feels a lot better. Now I did notice that the enemy players are actually, the enemy characters are actually overlapping each other as they get close together and instead of grouping up. So I want them to have more of a more of a bundling up effect. I want them to kind of have collision with each other. So I'm gonna give this next round of feedback to the LLM. And I'm gonna be very verbose in what it is that I'm describing so that the LLM has a clear picture of what it's trying to work on. the new build of our game. Let's take a look. And right off the bat, this feels a lot better. The, player, the enemies are tracking toward the player well, they're bundling up nicely. So now that we have the core foundation laid, let's add in a brand new system entirely. Let's add in a turret and some shooting mechanics. So again, I'm gonna be very verbose with what it is that I want. I want the turret to rotate in 360 degrees and I want the turret to always kind of point toward the uh, player mouse cursor. So that way I can have like a keyboard and a mouse configuration for moving around and shooting separately. And when I click on the mouse, I'm gonna shoot the bullets in the direction uh, from the player toward the cursor click. All right, let's check out this build. So far, so good. This is working exactly as I would expect. Now, one criticism I have is that the uh, the direction that the turret is, is, is aiming isn't very clear here. The contrast isn't high enough, and maybe they need to have some sort of a protruding turret outside of the player like like circle area. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this feedback to the LLM. And because this is the GPT-4 vision model that powers WebGPT, I can actually take a screenshot of the playground, and that way I can give some visual feedback to the LLM as well, so it can kind of have a better idea of what it is that I'm asking for in this next iteration. If you recall, this is a three-step build process. Sometimes the LLM will do this and forget to commit the change. See, this last step here was just the preview commit, so I just have to remind it to take that last step, and it will, and then I can go ahead and play test the new build of the game. Now, this is very interesting. I didn't ask it to do this, but it looks like it's trying to, it's thinking of the player like a human, so it kind of moved the turret to like an arm with like a pistol in the hand, and I don't like that. I want this to be more like a, like a ship or a drone. Uh, that's more like it. So now I'm playing on a laptop, so with the trackpad and the arrow keys, it's a little bit clumsy, the controls. So let's go ahead and add a little round of polish here. We're gonna add WASD controls um, and also uh, add the addition of the space bar to uh, um, allow the player to also fire in addition to mouse clicking. It looks like the LLM forgot to commit the change again. So just another quick reminder and it gets back on track. Yep, commit is true. 
And yes, now that I can control with WASD and I can use my other hand to just kind of keep the trackpad mouse in the, the mouse cursor in a certain location, this feels a lot more natural. And I can use space bar to fire the cannons. All right, so we're at a pretty pivotal point in this project where the game, the core gameplay is pretty fun, but we have some additional systems that we need to implement, like the lives, the game over screen, the wind conditions, the timer. So I'm gonna tell the LLM and, and make sure I'm very explicit about this being a pretty good reference point in the project in case we introduce any regression bugs and need to revert to this point uh, in the future. Now, because this is one of the most significant updates that we're going to be doing in the project so far, I'm also explicitly going to tell the LLM that I want it to be to take care not to introduce any regression bugs. You might be surprised by how actually instructing your LLM to be accurate like this will actually have a profound impact on its ability to, to make an accurate implementation. You notice that WebGPT actually breaks down these sets of changes into two steps. So it does the first step, tells me that it needs to do another round of edits, and then it's gonna give me a new link to play test the game, and that's exactly what it does. I mean, come on, how impressive is that? The timer's working, the lives, now the lives label isn't fully visible on the screen, and I also noticed that I, when I get uh, hit by an enemy, my lives aren't actually decrementing, but that's an impressive uh, set of iterations right there. And I'm just gonna give this feedback to the LLM and have it take another stab at this and have it fix these implementations to get a more accurate representation of our game. I give it a screenshot again, and the LLM is gonna be courteous and thank me for that, as well as the feedback, and it's gonna go ahead and do another round of changes. Would you look at that? The lives are displaying properly in the top left corner now. They are decrementing when I get hit. Now, when I lose my last life, it actually just freezes the game. There is no game over screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this feedback to the LLM and ask it to uh, implement this actual proper game over condition. I look, it's doing this again where it's only previewing the commit. It's forgetting to commit it. So gotta remind it one more time, no big deal. There we are. Now let's see what happens when we die. What, what, what was that? Did you see that? One of the enemies was still visible in the game over screen. Yeah, so I'm gonna take another screenshot so that the Vision LLM can have a stab at this and have some reference points to what I'm talking about here. But basically it needs to, to clear the screen of any objects as well as it needs to show the amount of time that I survived on the game over screen as well. All right, at our final build, let's take a look. Success! All right, so uh, now that it's all working, I'll just click the replay, verify that it works, and we'll play it back at real-time speed now. So this is 1x speed, so you can get an idea for what the actual final game feels like. The link to play this will be in the description or in the comments below, so go ahead and take a look, and you can try WebGPT in the custom GPT store of ChatGPT Plus today. Oh, and before you go, WebGPT can also generate images, by the way. So let's go ahead and get like a classic retro 80s style arcade theme going for our game. Badass.